Hey friends, Raul Jimenez here with The Schrader Group. I'm blessed to be here with Tito Toledo. He's with BPG Inspections. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty on what to expect on a home inspection. I mean, there's so many different processes. I think people get scared when they're like, oh, we gotta get a inspection done. And then you see 30 pages of what it might be. <laughs> and we're just here to you know dissect it a little bit, make it a little bit more friendly. So I'm here with Tito. Uh, please introduce yourself, tell me what you do. Uh, hi guys, I'm Tito Toledo. Uh, I'm with BPG Inspections. We do home inspections here in San Antonio. Um, BPG's all over Texas and all over the US. Um, so we check people's homes, make sure that they're safe, things are working properly, um, and to help people make the right choice when it comes to that decision. So when you when you talk about the right choice, I always like to look at it because I'm a listing specialist here for the Schrader Group. So I go in and look at all the big ticket items, you know, your foundations, your electrical, HVAC, plumbing, roof systems, things like that. But what are some of the main components that you're actually dialing in? Because I'm going to look at the outside and kind of check to see what we're at code, but I'm not going to open attics. I'm not going to go in there, you know, in a suit and tie and get all sweaty. Right. So tell me a little bit more about what you guys do. Do y'all get on roofs, things like that? Correct. So, um, no, you're right. Our eyes are trained to look at different things. Yeah. Um, for us, or really for any house, uh, the big five components are going to be your foundation, uh, your roof, plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. Um, the inspection is really just a visual inspection of all these major components. Uh, so we can decide and determine what things need repair, um, what things might need to be replaced, and what contractors you might need to contact to further evaluate any of those systems. And and your your company gives like a, does it give like a spec sheet when it comes out like what should be checked on any kind of bid process things like that? Yeah, so we do things a little bit different. Um, I agree with you that you know sometimes you get an inspection report, thirty pages, just pictures, comments, and you got to go through it, try to figure out what the most important things are. Um, so we try to make things a little bit easier for y'all. Okay. Um, something that BPG does that we like a lot is that we give a summary page. Okay. Okay, so for each section that of the big five that we just talked about, um, you have a summary page with everything that we found. Each one of those items that you're gonna see on there is gonna have a color, so either red or blue. And this is where we take advantage of that to let the client and the agent know what's maintenance and what's really important, mm -hmm. right? So the red items will be things like safety, um, things that aren't working properly, and then blue is more of maintenance, suggestions, things that we have to put on the report but aren't necessarily the end of the world. Right. Um, and it just it helps you whenever you sit down with a client to be able to differentiate, okay, this is a priority, this is a Saturday sure. project. Sure. No, I, I like the way you put that. We always say deferred maintenance, right? That's mm -hmm. something that you get to on, on a weekend, not, nothing big, but it's the big ticket items, right? You don't want anything to bust on you this summer heat. You don't want your AC going out three weeks after you buy the house. Yeah. So I definitely understand that. So a lot of our clients, um, you know, we do a lot of new construction, things like that. And I always say, always get an inspection done because even though it's a brand new construction, it has warranties, things like that, it's still built by men mm -hmm. and, and it, you know, a hammer nail, things like that. So I always say, you don't want to be sitting on your couch looking at the wall and be like, man, that's a little bit crooked. I should have got somebody out here to look at it. So talk to me about a little bit about the new side. What exactly do y'all look for there? Yeah, so um, it's crazy. I mean, people, not crazy, but the, the general concept people have is it's a new house. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't need an inspection because right. it should be perfect. Um, I hope I'm not the first person saying this, but there's no such thing as a perfect home. No. Um, at the end of the day, for new construction, you're gonna have a plumber, you're yep. gonna have an electrician, you're gonna have a drywall guy, you're gonna have an HVAC guy, and uh, all these guys go out there, they do their job, but they're not necessarily talking to each other. Sure. Okay, so uh, for us, new constructions recently have been turning out between 15 to 25, maybe 30 points mm -hmm. on a new construction. Okay, so okay, so rewind right there. You said points. Are you talking about deficiencies? What are you talking about there? Yeah, when I mention points, it's the deficiencies that we find at the okay. house. So a brand new house, 20, 25 deficiencies and should be brand new, right? Sure. Well, and, and I think on that that aspect, it's a lot of minor stuff. I think that's a couple, you know, a little more insulation here, a little bit more, you know, imbalance here. The doors aren't light, latching or whatnot. So in most cases, that's what it is. Okay. Okay. I um, don't want to scare anybody out there. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, um, part of it is, I want to say two weeks ago, um, climbed up into an attic, brand new construction, and there were some framing members that weren't installed properly. Mm. And 
if you don't know to look for those things, you're probably gonna buy the house like that. Well, and, and to that point, I always tell my clients, you know, y'all are gonna go in looking at all the bells and whistles. I can't believe we actually got here. We're actually gonna close on Friday and you're emotionally <laughs> happy, butterflies are flying. Uh, but you know, I normally go in and kind of look at some of the other items, you know, like looking at She-Rock, any kind of deficiencies on that side, making sure everything's working, but you're gonna go a step further. And I always recommend getting an inspection regardless because I think peace of mind is better than the four or $500 that it's gonna cost you or whatnot. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know that everything is to your standards, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, you know, even on my house, I found little things, a lot of little things, but nothing major, but it was those little things that, you know, you just wanna make sure they get taken care of because if in two years when you try to sell, you're gonna have to deal with those anyways, right? Yeah, no, I mean, one is to, figure out the things that aren't done right so that they can correct them. Mm -hmm. um, but in other cases, like it's human error sure. sometimes too, right? Uh, and if the builder will not fix it or it's something that doesn't need to be corrected, mm -hmm. at least have it on documentation. Sure. Because the day you go sell the house, if they find that and there's no previous history that something, you know, that that was there before, yeah. Um, it can cover you, it can cover you. No, absolutely, so, I, I agree with that. Uh, and, and that's something I don't, you know, when I go in there and we get the list from back, I'm like, man, this should have been all done with the builder within the warranty, what ended up happening. And a lot of times I tell them at month 11, go ahead and get an inspection done. That way you can just turn it over to the builder and say, fix X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So uh, talk to me about time. I mean, some, some inspections are quick, easy, some are a little bit more thorough, depending on age, things like that, the roof system, square footage, one story, two story, all that kind of things. But what's a typical gauge for, let's just say your standard one story, 1800 square feet at home. Okay, so one story, 1800 square feet, 100 year old house. Eh. We're looking give, at give probably me. like a two hour inspection. <laughs> give me about a 30 year old um, house. <laughs> there we go, 30 year old house, uh, more or less looking around an hour and a half. Okay. Um, I'd say that the duration of the inspection is gonna be based on three things. Okay. Age, size, and the condition of the okay. house. Okay, and what, what is a typical turnaround time for you guys? Uh, for us, we give you that report before the end of the day, usually a couple hours after the inspection. Okay, uh, which is good because if we're on the resale side, we have option periods and we have timelines and things like that that we have to adhere to. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely quick. The turnaround is really what we, what we look for when we're trying to you know get the house on the market or sell it or close it or whatever we got to do. Mm -hmm. um, what don't y'all look at? Like, what aren't y'all gonna give recommendations on or what, what, what kind of items are outside that box? The things that usually don't fall under a home inspection mm -hmm. will be things like cosmetics, okay. uh, low voltage wiring, and any auxiliary appliances that are installed. Okay, okay. meaning? Right, so meaning like a water softener, okay. an ice maker, um, a garage fridge, things like that. Okay. Um, it's outside of the scope of the inspection, but if I wanna make clients happy and I wanna make sure that I check things thoroughly, I'm checking on the installation of the water softener. Okay. I might not be able to tell you the efficiency and if it's working correctly. See how many irons or whatever is exactly, in there, you're not testing the but water. Hey, they installed it correctly. Uh, mm -hmm. You have salt in there. Um, ask the seller more or less what's going on with this and how to maintain right. it and that's it. And, and talk to me about pools. Do y'all do serve it or look at the motors, the functions, the Polaris, make sure everything's functioning as well? I know it's probably an a la carte item. Yeah, so um, what BPG offers is the main home inspection, okay. just the, inspect, the regular inspection. And then aside from that, we also offer add-on services. Okay. So we can also add on things like termite, pool, um, jacuzzis, we check septics, we check wells, um, we do sewer cameras, we can do repair estimates. So I mean, there's quite a list that of add-on services that we mm -hmm. can do. Uh, for a house with a pool, yes, we'll be checking water level, the actual condition of the surface of the pool, the equipment, um, functionality of everything. I mean, it's it's a full, full on inspection. Full on inspection. What are some of your biggest questions that people ask you when they're, when they're either gonna get an inspection for the first time or you're in a seller's house because they're like, my house is perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been taking care of it since 1985. Like, I mean, <laughs> what are some of the biggest questions you get that you kind of gotta, you know, debunk a little bit? So I'll be honest, the most common question that I get is would you buy this house for your daughter or for your sister? Mm -hmm. Right, and um, the answer is always the same. So if the numbers work out, then yes, I would mm -hmm. buy it for them. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're offering, plus whatever repairs you gotta mm -hmm. make to get the house up to par, um, how does that compare to the comparables in the area? Sure. And that usually makes the decision for you. So a lot of times what I do with my inspections is, I, uh, especially with first time home buyers, I like to kind of get a recap, get them to the house. And do you provide that kind of recap service? Yes. So I strongly encourage that either the agent and or the client mm -hmm. um, makes 
it to the inspection. Okay. Um, it gives us a chance to kind of talk about some of the things that they're going to expect on the report. Mm -hmm. um, only reading the report can be pretty alarming sometimes. Sure. Like well, that's 30 just pages of the nature. The house is not good. Exactly. So, um, you know, if you only see something on the report, it might be alarming. But if you give me a second, hey, this is the issue that we got. You're going to need an electrician. Sure. Probably this much in parts. Like you're not looking at anything crazy. Then cool, we feel a lot better. Right, than so we're reading a bunch <laughs> of electrical things on the report, yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, well, and then it's from when it was built to code now, and then like the changes, and was it grandfathered, and was it not? Is it working as intended? Yes, but you know it could be better because of the new standards, whatever it might be. Uh, one of the questions I always ask, especially with some of my trusted guys, is any red flags, anything I got to be worried about, and they're pretty much like it's a solid house, lots of deferred maintenance. X, Y, Z, this is where I would focus on. So you kind of do the same thing in the recap then, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. And sometimes people are from out of town. We can shoot for a FaceTime call or a three-way call at the end of the inspection. Like I, I do everything in my power to have that point of contact mm -hmm. um, because not only am I there to help understand the report and the inspection, um, but I want my clients to know that through BPG, there's uh, a year of free consultation with us when you oh. get an inspection with us. I didn't so know once you move in, you see a little crack, you see a little leak, something that you're not quite sure what's going on, send me pictures, text me, call me, and if we can't figure it out over the phone, I'll be more than happy to come by. Okay. Well, I, I didn't know that you provided that service, so that's actually a plus because, I mean, there's always things that come up like, what about this? Yeah. What about that? Yeah. Uh, so last question, what is your turnaround time? If someone wants to say, hey, I need an inspection, tomorrow or next week or whatever it is, what is a reasonable time that you guys can actually have somebody out there to go ahead and perform that inspection? Okay, um, if it's me personally, uh, usually the next day, okay. or within the next two, three days. Um, 48 hour kind of turn? Yeah, okay. so I mean, uh, I'll be honest, like there's some days if you call in the morning, there's a chance that I can do that inspection that okay. afternoon, okay? Um, we have right around 20 inspectors, I wanna say, here in San Antonio which means that if your main inspector isn't there, you can go through our website, click on soonest available, and pick a person that, you know, could be today, could mm -hmm. be tomorrow morning, but you get to see the soonest available. Mm -hmm. um, for us, everybody gives that report back before the end of the day, that's kind of like our goal. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, turnaround time can be as quick as 12 hours, or mm -hmm. it could be 24, and, and what is y'all's service area here in San Antonio? Man, so, I'll be honest, it probably goes inspector by inspector, inspector basis. <laughs> I want to be a 78259, that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, for us, uh, on like a regular week, I mean, we go as far as like Canyon Lake, um, like uh, Floresville, uh, Bernie, um, Kerrville. But uh, I'd be lying if I said I haven't driven three, four hours to go do an inspection and then come back. Well, I'd, I'd be in the same boat if I said I hadn't dr driven eight hours for a listing. So, I, yeah. I guess we're in the same yeah. boat. All right, so what about our rural friends that are a little bit further outside the city? Do we do we look at inspections on the septic, on the wells, anything like that? So I suggest do your due diligence. Okay. I mean, do the home inspection. Um, if your house has a septic tank, check out your septic. Um, if it's a little bit older of a house, I'd also suggest check out your sewer line. Okay. Um, could be some hidden damage down sure. there. Uh, but overall, guys, what I want you to take away is, yes, we're here for inspections. Um, but more importantly, we're here to always answer questions. Uh, if you guys got a listing, somebody else does your inspection, mm -hmm. we're here to help. Okay. Um, you're showing a house and your client absolutely loves it, but then they get to a certain area and they see a crack mm -hmm. and now they don't want it because the house is falling apart. Run, run. Take a picture, send it over. Like we're here as advisors, not just for that final inspection for y'all. Well, there you have it folks. Thank you very much, Tito Toledo. I hope you got a little insight on the inspection process. Don't be scared, it's part of the process. Uh, but please like and follow our page. If not, y'all have a blessed day and we'll talk to y'all soon.